Reverb Reverb Rooms by IAC Acoustics. I want to give you a little introduction to myself. My name is Andrew Pulte. I'm the NVH and Test Facility Sales Manager at IAC. I have almost 14 years of experience in NVH testing, both in the field, automotive and heavy truck and construction testing, and also in the lab environment all the way from material development up to full vehicle testing in the lab. I've been with IEC for a little over three and a half months now, and I come with a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering from The Ohio State University, and a master of engineering in acoustics from Penn State. IAC Acoustics is a catalyst acoustics group company. So we are part of a large group of companies around North America that focus on products used for noise abatement, noise control. Um, we work in all kinds of environments on the industrial side, uh, testing facilities, barrier systems, um, enclosures, anechoic and reverberation. Also on the architectural side for um, doors and windows, um, sound recording studios, radio, radio centers, music practice rooms. Uh, we have a very wide range of products. We, uh, IAC was established in 1949, so we've been a company for more than 70 years uh, in, in the industry. Our director, Thomas Hines, has been with IAC for over 20 years. Um, the industrial sales manager, Ted Marquis, also more than 20 years of industry experience focused on industrial. Uh, Darren Riley, our HVAC product sales manager. We have Ryan Wheeler, who manages the sales for barrier wall systems, and Kalina Winter for Power Sport Dyno. Before we get started with the details of a reverberation room, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between the two types of rooms. When it comes to acoustics, most of the testing facilities and enclosures have something to do with either absorbing sound or reflecting sound in a certain way. So on the left, you can see a little graphic of an anechoic room. And what that means is that if a sound is inside the room in an anechoic facility, that sound gets absorbed in the surface of the room. That, that surface can be the walls, the ceiling, the floor, or a combination of all of them. In a reverberation room environment, sound gets reflected. And the idea there is to have a very diffuse sound field inside the enclosure of a reverberation room in order to have the same amount of sound energy traveling in all locations around the room. IAC's Macrodyne Hardliner Reverb Rooms are a customized size room that can be in pretty much any shape and size that is going to be needed to fit your space. Um, some of the typical applications for these rooms are to measure sound source power, transmission loss of materials, typically flat samples, insertion loss, which can be uh, very 3D uh, complex geometry samples, microphone response characteristics, and also ma material absorption properties. Um, you can see in this photo in the middle, this is an example of a material absorption test. This sample is set on the floor. There's microphones placed in the center and in the corners of the room. The reverberation room also has these circular diffusion panels that are mounted on the walls and corners, and that helps keep the room uh, very diffuse, which I'll get into a little more details about what uh, diffusivity means inside the room. Some of the typical tests that are required for these reverberation rooms, um, a lot of provider uh, manufacturers for doors, windows, uh, absorbing materials in, in the automotive market. The uh, sound tests for AS, the ASTM series of sound level tests is, is pretty common. Most of these sound tests have ISO equivalents. ASTM C423 is a very common method for absorption by reverberation room. And you can see the photo here of the sample laid down flat on the floor. Notice how the sample is not uh, parallel to the surfaces of the room, but it's, it's a little bit crooked. And there is a specific reason for that. That's to make sure you can avoid uh, standing room modes 
and, and any uneven distribution of sound. Um, the idea is to have sound speakers um, producing sound in this reverberation room. Those speakers are amplified by the reflections in the room. And the idea is to have as much echo or reverberation in this room as possible to allow the sound to be evenly distributed across the entire volume of the room. In theory, no matter where you would put a microphone, you should have the same amount of sound pressure level measurement inside that room in a perfectly reverberate room. Some other common testing methods are ASTM E90. So that measures a transmission loss of partitions. Uh, to, that, that's done with two reverberation rooms. So there's one room on one side, one on the other, and then a partition in the middle. And that, that is the device under test. One of the biggest design criteria for determining a reverberation room performance is the volume of the room. And that volume of the room, which is seen in a couple of these equations here, determines what the frequency, the low frequency cutoff will be. Um, so there, there's a certain point where, despite the volume of the room, if you're given a certain volume below a certain frequency, the, the measurements are not going to be accurate. Um, there, is a, there is kind of a, a middle zone where special treatment may be needed, such as diffuser panels or moving veins, where you could potentially have a more diffuse field in this in this frequency range uh, between these two the cutoff frequency and the schroeder frequency and then above this schroeder frequency usually unless there's some uh, special special need for um, resonances the reverberation room is typically very diffuse so it's very important to understand what is the low, lowest frequency that you're interested in measuring in order to determine the size of the room As a couple examples here, um, in, a, in a 200 cubic meter room, that corresponds to a 125 hertz octave band cutoff, or 100 hertz, one third octave band cutoff. Similarly, in a 100 hertz, uh, 100 cubic meter room, that corresponds to 160 hertz, one third cutoff. So you can see as the volume of the room decreases, the low frequency cutoff increases. And that's pretty typical. That's, that's kind of a standard for any reverberation room. There's a lot of different applications for reverberation room testing. And this is uh, kind of a classic example of an old uh, air conditioning unit being tested. Um, usually, you're doing sound power measurements for the larger reverberation rooms. So you can measure anything that's producing a sound, home appliances, speakers, fans, pumps, HVAC systems. I mean, there's a, there's a wide variety of applications for this. There's also a type of test that is required uh, called the CAC. That's the ceiling attenuation class. This is very common for ceiling tile manufacturers. What they'll do is they'll take a sample of tile uh, a certain size area and you can see there's a there's a line up here this is where the tile gets mounted and then sound is produced in one side of a reverberation room and comes and and uh, is measured on the other side so you can kind of understand what the uh, what the flanking path sound pressure level is of the ceiling tiles to get a good indication of performance This photo shows a large reverberation room with a partition and, and a hatch door to allow you to do several different types of measurements in, in one room. Um, so ASTM C423 only requires one reverberation room. There are other standards that require uh, testing of two rooms. So having a partition or, or a test uh, mounting frame in the middle of a reverberation room in an anechoic receiving room allows a wide range of tests to be performed and a high level of flexibility. As I mentioned before, the lowest frequency band of interest is very important. Um, of course, what the available space is of, of your specific application is, is important as well. We can maximize the, the frequency band that's able to be measured given the performance requirements and the, and the space of your environment. Vibration isolation also may be important if there's surrounding 
uh, components. If, if this testing facility may be in a manufacturing facility where there's other heavy machinery, we can provide isolation of the entire enclosure, vibration, structure borne isolation if required. IAC's Macrodyne Hardliner Reverberation Rooms are very modular design. They're constructed as, as kind of a puzzle piece put, to, put together on site. Uh, this allows us for the maximum amount of flexibility, but also a more, more cost-effective solution as it's very standardized process for IAC. Um, it allows for a very, very tight installation. We're able to get a very high sound transmission loss performance given the, uh, the tight parameters and tolerances of every component that goes into here. Another factor in determining the reverberation room performance is the ratio of the length to the width to the height of the enclosure. The, those ratios become very important. Uh, if you have these proper ratios, then you're able to avoid these, what's called a standing room mode, where you have a, a unwanted resonance that uh, reflects back and forth between two parallel surfaces. That's usually a, an indication that you're going to have a, a peak and it's going to produce very, um, very unacceptable repeatability in your enclosure. The absorption of a reverberation room obviously must be very low. The idea is, in theory, if in a perfectly reflective surface, the absorption coefficient at all of the frequency bands of interest would be zero. Now, the um, ISO and ASTM standards require that this value at each octave band must be less than 0 0.06. And you can see here on this table that IAC's hardline and reverb rooms are well below these in, in the typical frequency range that uh, most end users need. Most of the applications require a either a single wall or a double wall system. And typically with the single wall system, um, they, they can come either mounted to the floor or there's an optional vibration isolator rail system that's used as well to, for, to provide some sp structure borne isolation. In a double wall system, um, typically there, there can be a, an outswinging door and an inswinging door, uh, but e we can modify those configurations if needed to have both in or both outswinging as well. And in a double wall environment, uh, the standard is to have a isolation system for the inside enclosure included. Some of the other standard features are, are pass-throughs ports that allow for cable access and, and any sort of other um, utility lines that may be required. Ventilation systems and silencers typically are side, either sidewall mounted or, or mounted on the ceiling. Uh, those come standard as well. Lighting, other utilities that may be necessary, tubular cable and power ports, um, the IAC noise lock door system, which is able to um, provide up to an STC64 performance for each layer of door. And then the, as I mentioned, the vibration isolation or the IAC Acoustifloat floor for double panel, double wall rooms. And of course, if there's a specific standard that this or room performance that this needs to meet, we will be able to provide that service on site with certification and commissioning test. There's a few other options as well. Uh, for a single wall system, there is the option, as I mentioned before, to do the floating floor system. Uh, access panels, removable hatches are all uh, options as well. They can be hinged or just uh, manual removable. We can go to pretty much any door size that's needed uh, and, and maintain a very high level of performance as well. So any sort of double leaf or triple leaf or even I, I've seen quadruple leaf systems. Um, it's, it's really very, very flexible system. Pretty much anything that you're going to need, we can provide it as far as door size. There's a standard list of room sizes as well for the hardliner reverberation room. Of course, we can customize this as needed. Uh, the typical volume of a reverberation room can vary anywhere from 
about 75 cubic meters to 300 on our standard size systems. Of course, we can go smaller or la larger depending on the size of the available space that you have and the constraints of the, the existing facility. Um, you can see as well, as I mentioned before, as you increase your volume of the room, the low frequency range of uh, repeatable measurements decreases. Um, so the, the larger room you have, the better frequency range that you'll have of uh, accurate measurements. A few of the advantages of working with IAC as far as our Macrodyne hardliner reverberation rooms, we do guarantee our performance and the hardliner rooms single panels are rated to STC 64 and we will guarantee that that performance is met with our system. We are a turnkey solution, we'll manage and will manage the design, construction and commissioning of the entire system from start to finish, including all the engineering details, drawing submittals up to final construction, installation and a punch list and, and final approval. And we'll, we'll support and, and provide materials for HVAC ventilation, electrical, other utilities, as I mentioned, um, any sort of special isolation detail that may be required, we can, we can definitely provide that. We work with other engineering partners for very specific applications or for any sort of customization. If there's a, an individual level of performance or, or a certain company standard that might not be published, we can help you with that as well. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, knowledge in the field and we work with a lot of other engineering groups and consultants to make sure that your specific application is met. The sound transmission loss, as I mentioned, our STC64 hardliner panels are the best in class. And we have a lot of flexibility, custom designs, custom colors and shapes. Um, if, if we want to get into non-parallel walls to minimize the number of room modes, you know, that's, that's definitely in our wheelhouse. I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to go over this webinar with me today. If you have any questions or if you'd like a copy of this webinar, please reach out to me at apulte at iacacoustics.com. My number is shown here below, 413-478-1271. And it looks like we have a few minutes left. So if you want to use the chat window, I can put up a couple of, uh, I can put up a couple questions here before we end the session. Okay, so someone asked me about sound power. Um, what is the difference between anechoic and reverberation room when it comes to sound power measurements? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So there's a, there's several different ways to measure sound power, and there's there's a handful of ISO standards out there that do it. Um, as, as I mentioned before, in, in theory, in a reverberation room, you technically only need one microphone if you have a very good reverberant room to measure sound power. Uh, because the sound is distributed evenly across the entire product that you're testing. If you're testing a fan, for example, um, at the inlet of the fan, the sound is going to be much higher than it would be uh, 90 degrees from the fan blades. Now, conversely, in, a, in an anechoic or a, a hemi-anechoic environment, what you can get with that is direction. So, in a in the reverberation room, you're measuring the absolute value of sound power, but in a hemianechoic room, you're measuring sound power at a specific, or you're measuring sound pressure at a specific point, and you need to make many measurements around the entire product to get a better estimate of the sound power, if that makes sense. Do we have any more questions?
Okay, well, if no more questions, I appreciate your time, everyone, and feel free to reach out to me for any other follow-up questions or, or if any additional information is needed. Um, again, if you'd like to, to review this webinar, please let me know. Thank you.